Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to lecture on flow measuring devices such as nozzle, venturi meter, and pipe to tube only. So here we go. Nozzles. A nozzle is a converging tube attached to the end of a pipe for the purpose of increasing the velocity of the issuing jet. So that's the main purpose, to increase the velocity of the issuing jet. So this is the nozzle, and its part are, we have the nozzle, we have the pipe, we call this the jet, the distance between the base of the nozzle and the nozzle tip is neglected if not specified in the problem. So that's the base, and this is the nozzle tip. So the head loss in the nozzle is given by 1 over C sub V square minus 1 times the actual or the velocity head in the nozzle tip, which is the velocity of the jet here. And this can be derived from the head loss in, a, in an orifice also, which will be discussed in the different topic. Next is a pipe to tube. It is a bent L-shaped tube installed in streams and pipes for the purpose of measuring speeds of liquids part liquid particles at various levels. So it is just installed in early pitot tube rather. Pitot tube was installed in near the bow of an airplane to measure speeds of airplanes. So we have here the pitot tube. Then this pointed end with very small opening, we call that the stagnation point. Because as soon as the particle hits that pointed end, the particle will have zero velocity. That's why it's called stagnation point. Then because of zero velocity, the decrease in velocity coming to stop, pressure will now increase pushing the liquid inside that enters this small opening here. So that's why the liquid level in this pitot tube is higher than that at the outer liquid surface. So that's it. So we call, let's call that 8 sub 1. And this vertical distance as 8 sub 2 to this liquid surface in the pitot tube. And it is assumed to be open to the atmosphere so that we can derive expressions for velocity. So if we write energy equation between 1 and 2, neglecting head loss, of course, the atom through 1 and 2, we have velocity head at 1. Pressure head at 1, elevation head at 1, velocity head at 2, which is 0 because this is the stagnation point. Pressure head at 2, which is simply 8 sub 2. If you sum a pressure from 0 pressure to this level here, that's P sub 2 over gamma 8 sub 2. P1 over gamma is simply H1. And Z1 and Z2 are both 0. So, of course, there is no head loss because between 1 and 2, that's a path of a particle without uh, distractions, disturbance, and they are very close. So it results to velocity head at 1, the velocity to be measured here at particle 1, plus H1, which is P1 over gamma, pressure head, then we have P sub 2 over gamma, which is H2, because these first and last terms in the right equation are 0. So solving for v1 squared over 2g of velocity head, we have quantity h2 minus h1, which is from the figure we denoted it by h. So therefore, the theoretical uh, velocity of this particle here is simply square root of 2g h, where h is this difference or the height of the liquid surface above the water surface, liquid surface outside. So the actual velocity is corrected by introducing a coefficient, coefficient of P to tube, which is usually high value 
such as 0 0.99 unless otherwise it is specified in the problem then you use that coefficient if not assume one so this device may also be installed in pipes in such a way that it is treated as a differential manometer so one end is there is a differential manometer maybe energy principles apply as well as the principle on pressure transmission so energy equation then sum up pressure from one point to another in order to analyze situations where a pitot tube is present in the problem and lastly let's have venturi meter this is a converging tube attached to or installed in pipes for the purpose of measuring the flow rate or discharge. So this is the shape in general. So let's select a datum. Point one is called the inlet. Point two is called the throat. The throat. Then if this is the datum. Then let's call this elevation at Z1. Because of pressure, the liquid surface is will rise in this piezometer to, to the atmospheric level. So that's P1 over gamma. And because of velocity at 1, then there is velocity head for the energy. So that's velocity head at point 0.1. Then at 2, this is the elevation head from the datum and because of low pressure it will rise up to that level then because of high velocity at 2 then it will uh, by the way this is the hydraulic grade line and this is the velocity head which is higher than that at 1 at the inlet and that this is the energy grade line so the drop is the head loss in the nozzle. So if you write energy equation between point 0.1 and point 0.2, first neglecting losses. So we have velocity head at 1, pressure head at 1, plus elevation head at 1 equals velocity head at point 0.2, pressure head at point 0.2, elevation head at point 0.2. Then neglecting head loss first. So rearranging such that this potential energy, potential energy are on the same side of the equation than the kinetic energy on the right side. And this will be the result. So this is the Venturi principle. That is the, the drop in pressure. The drop in pressure corresponds to the increase in kinetic energy or the drop in pressure is the increase in velocity. That's the principle in energy equations, even in Bernoulli energy equation. That's the result. So H, we will call this as H, the right side, the difference in the velocity heads at the throat and at the inlet. So that this equation becomes this V2 square minus V1 square equals to GH. So by continuity equation, because the flowing fluid here is a liquid, so, so it is just Q1 equals Q2. And Q1 is area 1, V1. Area 2 times mean velocity at 2. Expressing v2 in terms of v1 so v2 is area 1 v1 over area 2 substitute into this equation area 1 v1 over area 2 quantity square minus v1 square equals to gh and factoring out v1 square then we have area 1 square over area 2 square minus 1 equals to gh finally we can derive the v1 square which is 
area 2 square to GH over area 1 square minus area 2 square. The theoretical velocity at the inlet therefore can now be derived as area 2 square root of 2 GH over square root of area 1 square minus area 2 square. So that's it from this equation. That's the theory theoretical mean velocity at the inlet. So the theoretical discharge can now be established. It is equal to area 1 times theoretical velocity at the inlet. So Q equals area 1, and this is the theoretical velocity at the inlet. So area 1, area 2, square root of 2GH over area 1 square minus area 2 square. Remember that H is the difference in the velocity heads at the throat and the inlet. Then the actual discharge can now be derived by introducing a coefficient called meter coefficient capital C, which is less than 1. So it is equal to C area 1 area 2 square root of 2GH over area 1 square minus area 2 square. Then, for circular pipes, because area 1 is pi over 4 diameter 1 square, area 2 pi over 4 diameter 2 square, and we have pi over 4 also here, squared, then extract the square root, pi over 4, 1 pi over 4 will be cancelled from here. So Q equals C, the actual discharge would be, for circular pipes, would be pi over 4 C, Diameter 1 square, diameter 2 square, square root of 2 GH over diameter 1 to the 4th minus diameter 2 to the 4th. So this equation comes after here. You just replace area 1 pi over 4 diameter 1 square and area 2 by pi over 4 diameter 2 square. Then if head loss is considered, then we can derive formulas for actual velocity at the inlet and actual discharge without introducing C because we consider head loss. Now, the head loss, take note, is at the right side of the equation. Therefore, when we rearrange the terms in this manner, then it remains here. H would, would be here. Oh, sorry. If we, because this is small h and the head loss is here, then we must, it must be here but with negative sign. So therefore, this right side would become h, this left side rather would become a, small h minus head loss. So h minus head loss is equal to this steel difference. So when we derive for the theoretical uh, velocity at the inlet, this was a result. This time, if we derive the actual discharge, then take note that H minus head loss will come together here. So we replace small h by small h minus head loss, and we'll have the actual velocity at the inlet, which is area 2 square root of 2g quantity small h minus head loss over area 1 square minus area 2 square. So as a result, the actual discharge would be in here, the, without introducing C, area 1, area 2, square root of 2G quantity, small h minus head loss, over area 1 square minus area 2 square. Then the actual discharge for circular pipes would then be pi over 4, diameter 1 square, diameter 2 square, square root of 2G quantity, small h minus head loss, over diameter 1 to the 4th minus diameter 2 to the 4th. Since these equations are the same, so from this equation here, if we equate these two, everything will be cancelled except square root of h here. C and square root of h here will be left. And in here, everything will be cancelled except uh, square root of h minus head loss. 
So the meter coefficient is simply the ratio of the actual discharge to the theoretical discharge. That's the definition. And another way to define the meter coefficient, it is equal to square root of quantity small square root of quantity h small h minus head loss divided by h after we equate these two equations for actual discharge. So remember the expressions for meter coefficient and remember the expressions for actual discharge. There are two formulas that I derive here. So that's all for this video. I hope that you were able to understand and follow. And I hope that you can remember these formulas.